Ashby de la Zouche Castle is a ruined fortification in the town of Ashby de la Zouche, Leicestershire, England, and was once the seat of one of the most powerful men in the late 15th century English politics, William Lord Hastings, who would later be executed by Richard III. The Doomsday Book of 1086 records that the land of Ashby de la Zouche were worth 40 shillings. There is no mention of a castle, but it is known that the castle was built on the site of an old manor house dating from the late 11th century. For the next century the land formed part of the estates of the Earl of Leicester. They granted it to a family of Breton descent with the name La Zouche in return for military service. Following the death of the last direct heir to the Zouche inheritance in 1399 and disputes over its ownership, Ashby was eventually granted in 1462 to William Lord Hastings as part of a much larger grant of land in the Midlands. Hastings had acquired immense power and wealth in the service of Edward IV. At Ashby de la Zouche, Lord Hastings adapted an existing manor house. He also built a new chapel and two towers that still dominate the ruins. Lord Hastings was executed in 1483 and work on both his castles was interrupted both at Ashby and Kirby. The unfinished buildings at Kirby were later abandoned but Ashby became a principal seat of his descendants. During the Civil War, Ashby was an important royalist base, under the command of Henry Hastings, Lord Loughborough. It surrendered in 1646, and two years later, the fortifications were demolished. Ashby de la Zouche Castle became a popular tourist resort in the 19th century, in part through its mention in Sir Walter Scott's novel, Ivanhoe. Passing through these double doors, you will come to the hall. This was the principal public interior of the house, where the Hastings household would have dined. In its present form, the hall ruins reflect the arrangement of the interior in the 17th century, probably after the Civil War. The medieval windows were replaced and a fireplace was inserted into one of the walls. At the same time, the walls were raised in height, which must have also necessitated re-roofing the building. This roof survived until the mid-18th century. The hall was heated by a central half, now covered over but visible as a rectangular mould in the middle of the room. Visible in the lawn beyond the half are the grassed over remains of a dais, the high table where the head of the household could dine with his guests. Tables for the Hastings household would have been raised along the length of the hall. This building was essentially the 15th century creation of Lord Hastings, but the two end walls seem to incorporate earlier masonry. At the opposite end of the hall from the services is a pair of withdrawing apartments, probably a parlour at ground level with a great chamber above. These were the principal entertaining rooms for important guests. The great chamber preserves its fine 15th century fireplace and a huge grid window cut through in the 16th century. An inventory of 1596 records that the great chamber was hung with tapestries, depicting the story of the Romans. Besides several carpets, chairs, a chest and bedding, there were also fine irons and a warming pan. It is possible that the parlour was known as the Bull's Head Chamber after the Hastings family crest.
Lord Hastings built the chapel, which would have been served by priests and singers from his household when he was in residence. They sat in stalls along the side. The high altar, backed by a painted or sculpted altarpiece, was on a dais at the far end. In 1907, the eastern part of the chapel was screened off for use of a burial place for the Hastings family. Scars and sockets in the wall show that there were two balconies, one above the other, within the western end. The family or senior servants could observe the service in private from these so-called closets. The first floor closet was connected to the great chamber by a door, now bricked up. After the Reformation, the Hastings family became Protestant and employed many notable radical preachers. The religious imagery in the chapel was probably destroyed at this time. 16th century panelling at Smithby Parish Church is reputedly from Ashby de la Zouche. The chapel, great tower and curtain wall enclosed a small courtyard of buildings. The mark of a roofline and wall sockets for timbers and a lost range are clearly visible against the blank south wall of the chapel. In 1596, inventory shows that this courtyard contained bedchambers and a great parlour which was perhaps connected to the great chamber by the first floor gallery. Several of these rooms are now described as overlooking the garden. In the 15th century outer walls are several medieval fireplaces, many with fixings for different types of fire irons. The large culvert drained the courtyard and also the latrine hidden within the thickness of the walls. A door in the kitchen leads to the 15th century cellar under the tower with niches for storage of barrels. Cut through from this, probably as part of a civil war defence, is a tunnel that leads to the Great Tower. The Great Tower was the architectural centrepiece of the castle and, even in a ruinous state, remains an eloquent testament to the power and wealth of Lord Hastings. The tower was crowned by a projecting parapet of battlement and elegantly panelled turrets at the corners, the remains of which survive. It was built of cut stone and its windows grew in scale and grandeur on each floor a reflection of the relative importance of the rooms inside. The main stair is set at the juncture of the tower and turret. On the uppermost floor, this stairwell is decorated with three carved shields, displaying the arms of Hastings and his wife, Catherine, and his son, Edward, and a finely moulded door. From the top of the building is an excellent view of the wider setting of the castle, including the former outer court and gardens.
The main lawn beyond the Great Tower are the clear earthwork remains of part of the castle gardens. There is record of gardens and orchards at Ashby de la Zouche from the 14th century onwards. In the 1460s, before Lord Hastings started building here, there is reference to a great garden near the manor. The later development of the gardens had obscured this earlier phase. The existing garden remains probably date from about 1530. From the garden side, you can see these small holes in the wall caused by musket balls fired during the Civil War. At the outer corners of the garden are the remains of two brick towers. One to the southeast is polygonal with a projecting stair turret. The other to the southwest is like a four leaf clover. One of its lobes contains the remains of a staircase and fragments of a fine pavement in the basement. These buildings were probably banqueting houses where parties of guests could be entertained. Ashby de la Zouche is a fantastic castle to explore and I highly recommend you visit. Though now a ruin, its elegance is still visible and will take you back to a time when castles dominated the landscape. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Until then, goodbye.